would like to talk about the resources that we use here in um, PV to meet the needs of the varying needs of our students. So we have textbooks, we have technology. Um, so we want to um, just get your uh, get your thoughts about what are some of those resources that you think of when you think of students learning in a classroom. What are some of those resources that they are using to help them? Um, to help them learn. So, and we want to use Padlet as um, a means of collecting this information from you to kind of get some information ab about what you know. So, this particular tool that we just learned, uh, to, or that we just used, I'm sorry, to have our brainstorming on the various resources that support, le support learning is called Padlet. And it can be used for a variety of things. Um, generally used for formative assessment. Um, students can give open-ended responses. Um, there were just brief phrases that were typed just now, but students could be asked to write whole sent, you know, a, a full sentence or a few sentences responding to a question. It can be used for brainstorming and idea generation. It's quite interactive, and if displayed in front of the class, we see that immediate feedback. Um, it's a writing opportunity, and it's one synchronous, uh, or it can be used asynchronously. Students can be assigned to post something to this Padlet, and then the rest of the class can see. So it's really a nice collaborative platform uh, for students to work and share their ideas. It's also very low risk, um, as the students don't, their names are not appearing there, so they can feel free to um, take a risk. So this is an example of a resource that we would use with a technology resource. So sort of a resource once removed, if you will. But the idea is that we help you to see some of the things that are happening in our classrooms involving technology resources. And Padlet is one that's really um, become pretty popular with our teachers because of some of the characteristics that Mrs. Gambeski just shared. And the nice thing is that it can be used um, across the grade levels. I mean, it can be used in a kindergarten classroom uh, with students just writing, uh, just uh, using invented spelling and trying to um, type words in, where it can be used in a um, senior um, high, um, English class as well um, for various different uh, reasons. So it's it's really has multi purposes. It's a big digital piece of paper. So with that, it has endless uh, possibilities. Kahoot is a uh, amazing, awesome resource, which is extremely engaging for students. Um, and you can use it as a very, very quick formative assessment tool. And it, it stretches all bounds of science. You can use it for math, technology, social studies, English class. But it's a way to, to create, basically it takes the place of the old um, uh, student response systems or the clickers where students used to get these plastic remotes and they used to log in or have to log in or uh, hit a button to answer a question. But now you can do it all online and students can use their either their own device, they can use their own smartphone to log in and respond to questions quickly. So what I'm gonna do is take us through a uh, trivia Kahoot just to test it out. Question six, Philip Deal is associated with the invention or discovery of what? Is it red, the life vest, blue, the computer mouse, orange, the electric sewing machine, or green bacteria? Philip Deal okay. invented what? Everybody answered. Correct answer is the sewing machine. Nobody got that one. Ooh. Okay, so Kahoot, um, as, a, as a student response program, can check for more specific kind of pre-assessment and check for understanding. Kahoot, uh, similar uh, platforms, they're interactive, they're engaging for students. Um, they're low risk in that students don't have to have their name shown. Um, they add that game-like quality, uh, that, you know, bit of friendly competition, uh, but, but it gives teachers 
teachers immediate feedback uh, and can then guide instruction as they move forward in their units of study. Um, so it's a fun way to uh, you know, work your way through a unit of study. Technology is becoming more and more popular as a resource with our students and with our teachers. And this year, there is a strong effort to work towards improving and strengthening our infrastructure to maintain the functionality that we need as we also propose to increase the number of devices that our students have access to and will be using in their classrooms. Just to start very briefly with textbooks, just as something this committee, the curriculum committee, the teaching and learning committee should be aware of, there are a few textbooks that will be proposed this year. And what's different about the textbooks this year is that the AP Human Geography textbook, which is pictured there but may be difficult to discern, it's paperback, it also has online access for students. The economics book is strictly online. So students won't have a hardback reference or that traditional hardback textbook. So as we propose these books to our board, drama is a question at this point because there aren't very many students signed up for that course. Um, this is really the first time we're proposing it run. So we're, we're, there's some uncertainty around whether we'll actually propose that book to our board. But AP Human Geography and Economics are two books or two resources that will be posed to our board. And the first is in both that hard copy as well as online format while economics just online. And that teacher who will be leading economics next year has a set, set of, of set own of books. Books. So, so his students will actually have access to the textbook in, in school, school in class. class as well as from home if they have a technology resource. So even the textbooks that we're proposing these days are more connected to technology than they have been in the past. Two major categories we are working towards, as I mentioned, making our infrastructure more robust and setting it up to support the additional devices. These are the things that we're thinking about as we introduce more of these resources into our classroom environments. We want the resources and the network to be reliable. We want to provide our students with access We'd like to be able to be mobile, so the wireless needs to be strong. We look for interactivity and to be able to facilitate collaboration among our students. Anywhere, anytime learning. With respect to infrastructure, what's being proposed are servers and switches, which will, again, make our infrastructure more robust so that students will be able to connect to the internet faster. They'll be able to um, view more multimedia um, and video that's available via the internet as they're working. District-wide, this will strengthen um, the capabilities for students and staff in all buildings. We talk about the industry standard being a replacement cycle that includes 20% of your assets every year so that everything is replaced over a five-year period. So that may be a really difficult target for us to hit, but it is a target. So it's something that we're looking toward or working towards at this point. We are attempting, as we, as we move towards the end of the third marking period this year, to become much more systematic with our replacement cycle and our refresh of the assets we have. This year, there's been a very detailed inventory that's been gathered so that um, there is a higher level of detail in terms of what devices exist in which buildings and which grades for what purpose. And we want to continue that. And as we look at that, think about how we maintain those devices or resources that allow our students to have the access to the activities happening in classrooms to support their learning. As you can see, what's proposed here is the elementary refresh plan over the next three years. 
uh, represented on the table is what was existing, what, what equipment is existing prior to um, this school year. And then beginning with this school year, 2015-16, and up through 2018-19, this is the current draft of our refresh plan. Uh, one of the things that I will point out specifically is that we are looking to replace some of the equipment in our classrooms, in the backs of our classrooms. We are looking to replace each classroom, hoping, fingers crossed, with four devices per classroom. So I have that circled there. It says 31 because that number will change depending on the elementary school. In this particular elementary school, there's 31 classrooms, so four in the back of each room. That's 124 Chromebooks. You'll see that under the 1617 um, column. Uh, just to point out on the bottom, 16 for uh, CB is Chromebook, DT desktop, and so forth. To give you an idea of how we're thinking of replacing some of our equipment in the buildings. Moving to the next slide is our um, draft for the middle school. Again, these are drafts. These have uh, gone through many changes already. And if anyone has any comments or something they'd like to share, please feel free. Uh, we would love to hear any kind of input. At the middle schools, we are looking to replace some of our labs and we are trying to be very strategic in what devices we choose and for where and what purpose. So for example, in 2016-17, we are planning to replace one of our virtual labs with 30 Chromebooks and one of our, um, one of our regular Windows labs right now, those devices that are in there now are about eight years old. We're gonna replace those with 30 desktops. We are having a conversation um, regarding desktops versus laptops, mobility, and again, depending on need and purpose. And then our last slide with refresh is the high school level, where we again are looking to replace some of our older labs. We have several different types of labs represented here. Some are um, labs where classrooms, where I'm sorry, where classes or courses are taught on a regular schedule, and others are open labs where teachers can sign up to take their students. We also have other labs called mobile labs um, in which we are using Chromebooks or laptops that teachers can check out and bring either into their classroom or come to the library in a more relaxed setting to use those devices for learning. And again, the guide is at the bottom and this is our three-year plan as it stands.